Hey, what's happening guys? I thought today we would take a look at this cute little LRC reference that I picked up from AliExpress. It uh, does inductors. It is an inductor, a resistor, and a capacitor uh, calibration standard. And uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. So maybe what we'll do is we'll stop it from spinning because uh, I don't know about you, but giving me a headache. I can't, I can't get that to spin any slower. I'm giving it a 0.6 volts at 0.09 amps, so that's as slow as that little motor will go. I just thought I'd have some fun and hey, 30 volts, not so good. All right, so here it is on a uh, AliExpress's webpage. If you hear drums in the background, it is homecoming night here in Toronto. And there is a parade about 200 feet from my house. Anyway, so here it is. It is a, let's find a color that we can actually see. How about that? $12.16, but I've seen it up for as much as $18. Let's see what they say about it. Three kinds of high precision components. Metal foil resistor, oxygen free copper coil, that would be your inductor, and polystyrene film capacitor. Highest accuracy and stability. Yeah, kinda. It is a nice little box. We will take it apart. And that's really all the information they have to us. See, look, here's another one. It's the exact same thing listed for uh, $16.43. This is my first ever purchase from AliExpress. I just wanted to see how it would go. Yeah, I mean, it went okay. It actually took so long to come that I completely forgot that I bought it. Brand name, Frisby, Frisby. Electrical, yeah, that doesn't really say too much. Thank you. Delivery okay. Excellent product. Recommend. All okay. Yeah, so no, that means really uh, anything at all. Let's go have a look at it ourselves, all right? Right. Okay, I apologize for the uh, light reflection. And it really doesn't want to focus on that, but okay. Let's uh, take it apart here and see what there is to see. Um, when I was a an employed engineer, we had references in the lab, and I can assure you they cost more than twelve dollars. So, yeah, you know, take this with a grain of salt as a reference. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't realize the case was broken. So here's what we got. Hmm. We have the inductor here. I'm trying to get it to focus again. There we go, that's not too bad. This is our resistor, precision resistor. And these must be our capacitors listed at 60,000 picofarads. Now, if we take this here, I believe that says 60.073 nanofarads. And then our inductor says 796 microhenry. And our resistor is 179.95K. Okay, so it really doesn't matter what the values are for these, as long as there are known values. And you can see they've been done on a Fluke PM306 and an Agilent 3401A. So, you know, we know these to be reasonable values. They were done at 20 degrees C 
on December 1st of 2018. I just find them to be odd values. Why is it 170? Why is it 180k precision resistor? Oh man, this thing is just really. Yeah, I can't really see too much there. I will say the construction is well done. The soldering looks very good. And it's a nice little unit. So, first of all, I'm going to repair the case. So, I don't like broken things. My many years building and flying RC models has prepared me for this moment. I've got my BSI Instacure. And I've got my Instaset. Let's zoom out and zoom up. And this, this stuff is super thin. In fact, I'm not gonna use it one moment. Yeah, that Instaset is like water, and I don't want that. So I'm just going to use some super dollar store cheapo cyanoacrylate. And just going to put a small amount in a couple of places there like that. Now here's the magic. The other piece, I have this on my other hand, that's why I'm kind of working one-handed like this. The other piece just gets a quick spritz with that. Ooh, I love the smell. And when these go together, you better be right, because they are not coming apart again. Now, I'll tell you a little story. And if you ever speak to my son, he can verify it. Once upon a time, Uncle Paul was repairing one of his large airplanes in the kitchen, barefoot as I like to do. And this, these planes were made out of balsa wood. And I had, was repairing a wing rib. And I was pouring Instaset into the wing rib. See, this is already done. And apparently it was pouring out a hole in the bottom. And I glued my foot to the floor. And if it hadn't been for my son to come and get me some acetone, I would probably still be glued to the floor. He gets a big kick out of that story, let me tell you. So, let's put this all back together. That almost went off the table. I'm going to see, hopefully I haven't there we go. Change the hole size. So far, so good. Yeah. This is well done. Everything's going back together nicely. I like the laser etch on the top. Sadly, the nylon bolts are non-magnetic, so <laughs> you actually have to pick them up with your fingers, you know? All right, I'm going to put these last screws in, then we'll give her a test. All right, I brought out a, a small selection of meters for us to test. Now, none of these meters can test an inductor, so we'll only be testing the capacitor and the resistance. 
So just to remind you, the resistance is marked at either 179.95 or 179.999, depending on which test standard you want to look at. We'll start with the ANANG AN870. And it says... 180.1 So that's pretty bang on close to what this device was calling for. So I moved it and made it angry. Alright. Next we'll try the Zotec ZT M1. And we will go and set this manually 800K to 800K and see what it has to say. 180, right on. Let's see how fast it goes in automatic mode. About the same speed if you ask me. Next, the Kawitz HT-118A, which I find to be a rather nice meter. Oh, that's a capacitor, Paul, you big dum-dum. Okay. There we go. So that's the closest so far. The Kawitz, Kawitz, whatever it is. And then here is one of these little smart meters. This is the Zotec ZTS4. So theoretically, all we need to do is plug in our leads and turn it on. And turn it on. And turn it on. There we go. That's pretty quick. So unplug it. Yeah. See how fast it goes. Well, that's the fastest. That's the most accurate. In my opinion, of course. So let's leave that auto meter. And let's go from resistance to capacitance. And we should be seeing 60. 0.033 or 0.73 nanofarad. Are you ready? Three, two, one, boom. What are we going to get? Does it not know? Just sitting there, let's turn it off. Turn it back on. Yeah, see, it doesn't know that's a capacitor, I'm guessing. Sixty point oh seven three, we're getting fifty nine point eight, and I had to tell it that it was a capacitor. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt, right? Let's try this one, the Kuwaits. 60.0, wow, that's fast. And very accurate. Now the Zotec ZT M1. Doesn't have a uh, thing for capacitance, so we'll just go to the auto. fast but not quite as accurate as that one and then finally the anang or anang or whatever you want to call it but in reality anang is made by zotec so those are basically the same all right let's go up here and we want nanofarad 60.01 quick accuracy on range with this one 
the Kawits, Kawits, whatever it is, was still the best. What's that you say? Paul, do you have another meter we could test? Oh, do I? This is digital smart clamp meter with capacitance and temperature. Also from Zotec. I don't know what the uh, model number is because I haven't had it out of the packaging yet. This is the ZT QB4. Interesting. This is my first look at it, so. Come with batteries? Yes. Yes, it did. And it says it's smart, so let's find out how smart it is. We're still plugged into the capacitor there, and what do we get? It doesn't know. Volts, nanofarad, and 60.8. Is that pretty quick, but it can't detect the capacitor. See here it says select. We have to select for capacitor. It does auto voltage, resistance, and continuity. All right, let's uh. I don't even know if you guys can see that. Hello. Is there a light? There we go. Will you stop falling over? That's the problem with the clamp meter. Okay, so let's switch this from capacitance to resistance. And what we'll do is we'll turn we'll power it off. We'll power it on. Turn the light on. And we'll do a resistance. That is quick and that is accurate. So maybe if you guys are all good boys and girls, we'll do a review of this meter in the future. What's that you say? Do I have another meter? <laughs> oh, do I? But we're not going to get into that today. So there she is. A $12 reference standard. Certainly not laboratory grade. We'll call it Learn Electronics grade. I like it. If you liked it if you like this video give me a thumbs up feel free to comment share and don't forget to subscribe big thanks to all the patrons especially the new guys who just signed up this month thanks to all of you guys that's it i'm out peace